Coming up in ViewCast, breakthrough research in the fight against Ebola. See inside a Vanderbilt lab. Why overweight women lose in the workplace, especially with pay. It makes you happy. And one of the coolest women in music opens up at Vanderbilt. Hi, I'm Amy Wolf with ViewCast. We see fears about Ebola and the deadly outcomes all over the news. But here at Vanderbilt, researchers are working towards life-saving solutions. Researchers have isolated the first Ebola-fighting human antibodies. ViewCast Barb Kramer takes us inside the lab. The work begins in this sterile Vanderbilt tissue lab. The goal, to separate blood cells to find the best to make an Ebola fighting drug. We've spent years and years sort of fiddling with the conditions, the temperatures, the times, uh, the things that we add to help the cells grow. And we also have highly trained people here who are very meticulous and careful and gentle with the cells. All of those factors together have come together into a system that works for us. Once they find the Ebola antibodies, and they have found thousands, the unique system searches for the cells showing the most promise. There is no live Ebola virus at Vanderbilt. We're really the only lab that has a high efficiency technique for making cells like this with, uh, with human cells. Crow's work on Ebola antibodies began two years ago, well before the current African outbreak. I think one of the um, important lessons that we've learned is uh, to think ahead of these outbreaks. So. In our case, the National Institutes of Health and the Department of Defense were already funding us to work on germs like this, including Ebola and Marburg. And that funding helped speed up the search for an Ebola drug. What used to take us all day long, now uh, we can do 100 times that in an hour. So these instruments have, have greatly sped up the process. Crow says his team has found a few dozen strong Ebola-fighting antibodies. Some of them are fantastic. They're already the best antibodies that exist uh, in the field that we're aware of. And having 200 is, is about 100 times more than anyone else has ever gotten in a, in a study like this. So this is the largest collection, uh, and we seem to be getting the, the, the strongest antibodies that anyone's ever described. So uh, that's very exciting. In the world? In the world, yeah. Then the best Ebola-fighting antibodies are stored at minus 80 and lower until they are sent to a biosafety lab for more testing. We're trying to compress all this down, in the case of Ebola, to about a year, where we do discovery for four months, uh, testing for a few months, and then immediately go to the, um, the manufacturer as quick as possible. These Ebola antibodies are a short-term treatment. There is still no cure. Every day counts. I mean, we're pushing, pushing, pushing here. The hope is to have Crow's drugs in clinical trials in about a year. For ViewCast, I'm Barb Kramer. Read about the latest research and medical breakthroughs at Vanderbilt on our special site, news.vanderbilt.edu slash research. Because you know I'm all about that bass, about that bass, no trouble. A lot of us women can relate to this song. But the fun is over when impressions about a woman's weight impact her ability to get a quality job. New research by Vanderbilt Law School professor Jennifer Chanal finds the bigger a woman is, the more likely she is to work in lower paying and more physically demanding jobs. And she'll make less money compared to average size women and all men. Starting when a woman gets becomes overweight, um, she is increasingly less likely to work in a personal interaction communication occupation. And as she becomes heavier, she becomes increasingly less likely to work in a personal interaction occupation. These manual labor jobs include housekeeping, food preparation, and home health aides. You can watch the full ViewCast interview and hear how this research could impact future lawsuits on Vanderbilt.edu. Search Jennifer Chanel and wait. Gotta feel like hell tonight. And tears are rage I cannot find. One of the really cool perks of having a university right in the middle of Music City is a night like this. Are you strong enough to be my man? Um, if any of you all are avid tabloid readers, you know that I've been engaged a couple of times. And, um, and I have loved being engaged. It's been really fun. And uh, we'll leave it at that. 
Rock legend Cheryl Crow chatted with assistant professor of musicology Jen Gunderman at the Blair School of Music. It wasn't really until I had breast cancer that I started to learn what it meant to be liberated. To just go out and just, um, it sounds ridiculous, but to like celebrate. Along with teaching here, Gunderman is playing in Crow's touring band. Um, who has been so much fun having on the road to have a chick on the road. And they did an awesome acoustic set for us. For ViewCast, I'm Amy Wool.